Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show. This is where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author, Ramsey personality. My daughter is my co-host today as we take your questions about your life and your money. The phone number, 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Dan starts off this hour in Tampa. Hi, Dan. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How you doing today? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, um, thanks for taking my call, Rachel. Nice to hear from you as well. I um, wanted to give a call today. My wife and I, um, we got married last year, and um, recently we've saved up enough money to purchase our first home. Um, currently, we have saved um, more than 5% and even 20% down for a home. So mm-hmm. my biggest question today is, is it a good idea to start and maybe do 5 or 10% to start as you know, the world is in a very interesting place? And also, is it still a good time to buy a house? I know that you mentioned back in June or July that then was the best time to buy a house. Um, And so I want to make sure I'm a good husband and a good steward of my money. And I would just love some feedback and wisdom on that. Dan, you're such a good guy. Just so mature. I just just appreciate the thoughtfulness already. Um, You know, when it comes to, to buying a home overall, kind of the principle that I always say is, to make sure that you're the one that's ready to buy the home and it's not necessarily Mm -hmm. what the market is doing, right? It could be a great market and you could be broke and it would be devastating for you. Or it could not be a great market, but you financially have the money that you're able to jump in and you're like, you know, why not? Let's just do it, right? So like there's where you are, Dan, financially is the most important thing. And so everything that you've laid out Mm -hmm. so far, I'm assuming you have no debts and an emergency fund on top of the down payment. Is that correct? Um, so with the, we do have a $5,000 car payment. It's like $75 per month with okay. 2% interest. So that's the only thing currently. How much um, do you have in savings? No debt. How much do you have in savings? In savings? Is that with like my everything or everything? Oh, uh, we're talking probably over 110. Write a check today and pay off your car. Okay. Okay. Now you're debt free. Because you don't qualify to buy a house until then under Ramsey rules, okay? Because we don't want broke people yeah. buying houses. Because when broke people buy houses, it makes them broker. And when you got a car payment, For you're sure. broke people, okay? So now you're now you don't have a car payment anymore. We just got rid of that. We need to allocate three to six months of expenses of your money to the side for your rainy day fund, okay? That's all set. Okay, in, six months. and then in addition to those two things, the 5000 and the six months, how much do you have to put down in a house after I took 5000 so of your what, dollars? So what, I mean, taking out of, say it was 110 we'd be at 105 My biggest question no, is... No, 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 how much, is the, how much of that's the emergency fund? Oh, the emergency fund's about thirty grand. Of that 100 Yes. Okay, so now we have seventy five. 75. Yep. Okay. That's what we've got to work with. $75,000. Great. Now, what's your household income? Uh, household income annually uh, before taxes is 180 Okay. Way to go. What do y'all do? Uh, I am an account executive for a construction software company, and my wife works uh, as a customer success manager for a um, CRM company. Well, you guys are just like a power couple, man. Look at you. Way to go. <laughs> Good money, good Thank stuff. You. You're doing smart things. Way to go. Way to go. So, uh, yeah, then you start looking and saying, yes, I'm going to buy a home. Now, if you think that the world is so topsy-turvy that you need to hoard cash, then you don't need to buy a house. So you need to put $75,000 down on a house, smile, get you a nice house, 15-year wow. fixed where the payment's no more than a fourth of your take-home pay. And if you're not willing to plunk the 75000 down on that house, don't buy a house. Okay. Because it tells me so that you think the world's too crazy to be a homeowner. Well, and the mm-hmm. and the interest rates well, are higher, right, Dan? Then and that's what a lot of people are looking at as they are either first time home buyers mm-hmm. or buying. And so, like, oh my gosh, the interest rates. But here's the deal: you can refinance when the rates drop, which they will eventually. They're not going to stay this high forever, so right. you you can always refinance. Yeah. So put the seventy five sure. down. The rate, marry the home, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so my question is on that is. Um, 
to be completely frank, we're in our due diligence period. We've put an offer in on a house. It's been accepted. We've negotiated. Um, it is in Georgia. Tampa has been a great time, but it's just gotten very, very expensive um, and just due to community as well. But I'm necessarily not scared of the market, um, but I, I have people in my family that are very skeptical and thinking that I'm making a larger mistake, and I don't want you know, well, that's, that's, that's sweet, but they don't get a vote. Everyone's a dish. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's called yeah. being like a grown up and married. You make your own decisions stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's sweet sure. that people have an opinion about your life. They love you. And, and, and how old are you, that's Dan? Precious. How old are you? I'm 24. Okay. Yeah. So listen, Dan, this could be like kind of like Dave is saying, I'll say it in a nicer way, that your first decision that you're going to make that people in your life are like, ooh, that you're not being wise. So automatically, Dan, yeah, 24, mm. you haven't had the life experience in the years and the muscle to built to be able to stand really securely to say, no, 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 I've done the math. This is what we believe. And we're going to go forward, right? This is the first pushback. So it's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to question yourself. The first time your parents do question you as an adult, you're thinking, oh gosh, am I making a bad mistake? Right? So getting wisdom from people and all of that, I think is, is great. But what you have to understand is you've done the work, you've run the numbers, you're working a plan that you believe and that we teach here at Ramsey that millions of people have done and they've been okay and they've won with money. So you're not doing anything crazy or that's going to, you know, that, that, that's somehow going to sink you financially. So I would say it's going to feel uncomfortable, but once you go <laughs> against what your parents think over and over and have your own opinions over and over, it gets easier, right, Dave? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> the grown child it gets easier Dan. the grown child that had never had any issue voicing her opinion <laughs> since she was four so there we go okay <laughs> oh you're gonna be but fine dad it, it may have you. something to do with your mama don't want you to move to georgia too it could you know that could come up into it so um and we're going to use the economy as an excuse to keep you around in case you make a grandbaby so um there's all kinds of stuff can weave into these things. So what you've got to do is do exercise the muscle muscle of being kind to those who care about you, but don't get a vote. And it's just like, that's sweet. That's precious. Thank you for your input. Um, and we're going to go do whatever the flip we want to do anyway. Uh, so Sharon and I do a pretty good job uh, as uh, parents and in-laws uh, yes, you not do. voicing our opinion unless we're asked. Now, if you ask... Yeah, well, now you done opened the door, kind of like when you call the show, right? But, uh, <laughs> but if you don't ask, I just got to stand back and watch you and grin and go. That's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> <laughs> Which has happened a time or two. Yeah, no, I mean it, it's it may not leave a mark. I might be wrong, but I don't, we just don't interfere unless we're at. We don't. Matter of fact, we don't do that with anybody. With our friends, I had a friend the other day, stupid. He pulled up my driveway and showed me his new lease car, and I'm like, you know, well. That's nice. It's a nice car. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people. But what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility. Because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to NetSuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's NetSuite.com slash Ramsey.
Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. Hey, we've got an Entree Leadership Theme Hour coming up, and what that means is we'll be answering your small business questions. What's your current pain point with your business, your team, managing the finances, marketing questions? Oh, there's all kinds of things going on in business these days. It's a complicated little world out there. So send your questions to ask at RamseySolutions.com. Entree Theme Hour, ask at RamseySolutions.com. February 13th, I have taken over the Entree Leadership Podcast, where I answer your, I, we changed the format. I'm going to be answering your business questions, callers calling in on the podcast. And so if you want to participate in that, just check out the Entree Leadership Podcast. Uh, again, the February 13th version will begin with me answering your questions. I'm having a blast doing those. Uh, and so basically it's a a, a, a small business theme hour uh, once a week on Entree Podcast with me answering the questions. So in addition to the one we're going to be doing here on the Ramsey Show. So they're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> so be sure and jump in with us. Ask at, If you want to do any question for that matter, if you want to just email us in, the team will get back to you. We'll try to get you on the air here or on Entree, wherever you need to be, on Deloney's show. You can, we can get you there, man. I'm telling you. Ask at RamseySolutions.com, especially for an Entree Leadership theme hour. That's what the big push there is. So thanks for joining us. Natasha's in Canada. Hi, Natasha. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you for having me. Sure. What's up? Um, well, first off, I want to say thank you for giving a soon-to-be single mom some hope. Mm. Um, I thought I was going to be screwed, but now I'm not. So I, my question is about investing. Um, I'm in Canada, and I'm brand new to this, uh, brand new to your methods. And I've, everything that I've looked at online has everything to do with investing in the States. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if it translates to Canada as well. Well, fairly similarly, as far as the investing part, the principles are common sense and biblical principles. So getting out of debt, that translates anywhere, right? Um, living on less than you make, that translates anywhere. You've got to do those types of things everywhere, regardless. Now, as far as using the Ramsey baby steps, uh, you, you know, you can, as you said, you can find out about those online, a lot of different ways to get that. And there's seven baby steps and walking up through the majority of those will work anywhere until you get to the investing part. And then you've got to use, you know, we're talking about in the States, 401 one Ks and Roth IRAs, which doesn't apply in, uh, you know, in England, in Australia, we've got a lot of listeners there. Uh, and, and certainly in Canada, we got a ton of listeners. So and, and viewers. So anyway, to answer your question, once you get there, you, you know, baby step one's $1,000, two is your emergency fund, three is an, uh, or two is be debt free, except your home. Three is a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. Baby step four is 15% of your income going into retirement. Five is start saving for kids college. Uh, six would be pay off your home early. Those would stay in place. Then how you would do 15% of your income into retirement. You've got a Canadian retirement program, correct? Yes. But, sorry, I guess I should clarify. The question is more so finding the, who to invest with. Like, I know if I go to my bank, it's different than going, because you have your smart investor pros, right. but I can't find any smart investor pros in Canada there's because not you have to put in the zip code. Yeah, there's not any. <laughs> Uh, there's because okay. because of regulations, uh, Canadi Canadian regs are completely different than America. So uh, we're not able to do an endorsement of financial uh, of stockbrokers, uh, so to speak, uh, at investment advisors in Canada. But here's what the principle okay. you would use. You're looking for someone with the heart of a teacher. Yeah. So Natasha, sitting down with someone in this industry, I would say like any any industry in life, you're going to have people that are kinds that are patients that are willing to help you in your situation willing to teach you and you're going to feel that sitting down with that type of person or you're going to sit down and feel gross and the person is slimy and you're like i don't have a good feeling about this so trust your guts because or they're you, arrogant yeah so you want to be sitting down and hiring someone who again has a heart of a teacher so it's it's really feeling the spirit off of them and hey are they willing to walk with me and teach me. And that's the kind of person that you want to work with, not someone who is intimidating, that you're scared to ask questions. And that just feels gross. You know, those kind of people, Natasha, we all have that. You have that yeah. gut check where you're like, oh, I don't, this doesn't feel right. 
just listen to that. So inter- yeah. so go, I would interview, ask around even for, you know, your friends and family and just say, hey, do you guys use anyone that you trust, that you love? Interview maybe three to four different people and just kind of get a feel for what they're like, how they're explaining things to you. And then choose someone because I would, I, I would really recommend, yeah, having someone on your side who does this day in and day out. I think that's really, really important. But the big mistake with things that are intimidating or that we don't understand is to just turn it over to someone blindly and say, well, I've got me a guy and this is how people lose all their money. All right. Okay. And so, uh, you're responsible for your money, not the guy. He's responsible to teach you, or gal, he or she is responsible to teach you so you can make decisions. If they do not have the heart of a teacher, they will instead have the heart of a salesman, and there'll be a level of arrogance. There'll be a transactional feel rather than a relational feel to the meeting, to Rachel's point, and uh, you run out of there. And you get your different one. Natasha, are you at that point for investing? Do you have any You're debt, debt free? savings? I will be within the next few months. Um, okay. We're looking at, call, like, I'm looking at moving out in within about five months kind of thing. And at that point, I should be able to organize everything so that I can start off debt okay. free. And are you, because um, at the beginning of the call, you said you were a single mom. Is, is that a more recent thing in your life? It's going to be, yes. So it I will be. So I told my common law partner of 13 years at Christmas that or just after Christmas that I was done mm. trying to fight and wow. at the end of the kids school year that we were going to go our separate ways. I'm wow, Natasha, sorry. I'm so sorry. And you know what, Natasha, it, it would be okay to pause, you know, don't make a huge financial decision uh, in the midst of now cleaning this up, grief cleaning up your debt will give you stability. You don't need to pause that, but pausing the investing decisions. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to rush you, into that. You really, Part of recovering from a relationship uh, split up is to get your confidence back. I'm working on that now. Yeah. And so Mm -hmm. make sure you got that back because that melds into the advice we just gave you. Because, um, you know, like a few years ago, I had this lawyer that was working for me um, as a lawyer, not on my staff, but decided he was going to tell me how we were going to do stuff. And I went, no, man, you're confused. I write you checks. I tell you stuff. You don't tell me stuff, arrogant twerp. Mm -hmm. And so I had plenty of confidence to run him off because he decided he was going to be, you know, I'm supposed to do what he says because he's got a law degree, which means absolutely nothing. And so I do want to learn from him about the law and about the situation, and then I'll make the decision, but you're not going to dictate to me because I'm confident in that. And you need to be in that kind of a position, not arrogant, but confident that, you know, confidence in yourself. And I trust my own instincts and I'm going to learn from this person. And then I'll make the decision based on the knowledge transfer. And that's their job. And if they can't do their job, you need a different one. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, Natasha, I would um, pay off the debt, get some savings in place and and again, one year of not investing or not a big six deal. months, you're you're fine. Not I, a big I would deal. really just be patient with it because you're you're going through. I mean, there's going to be there's going to be a lot that you're about to walk through, and it's really hard, really really hard after 13 years. And if you guys have kids together, I mean, it's just um, it's hard. It's a yeah, it's a lot. So don't feel like you have to rush into something like investing. But I I am kudos to you though that you're researching and figuring out a plan and, you know, getting to this point that you're like, okay, I'm going to be doing this. So, um, so that, that's, that's amazing. If you're a new listener or a new viewer, like she is, Hey, listen, if you go to RamseySolutions.com, you can click the get started button, get started button, and it'll help you get to the next step in your financial journey. It'll show you what those baby steps are. We're talking about some of this lingo we throw around here on the show is all over the place. It's kind of inside baseball almost. So you can start to learn the lingo of the stuff we're talking about the get started button it's completely free it's an assessment that'll tell you where you are and then what your next steps are and we'll help you we're going to walk with you it's what we do completely free ramseysolutions.com click the get started button and if you're right where she is then you'll get to move on to the next step or be prepared to move to the next step this is the ramsey show
still on baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With healthcare costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today, number one best-selling author. Paul is with us. Paul's in Washington, D.C. Hey, Paul. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? Um, I have a question. I've been saving for college expenses with a 529, mm-hmm. and now I'm in a position where I'm ready to use it. My daughter's in college uh, but it's losing value, or it's been losing value based on the last year. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if I should kind of ride this out before withdrawing from the 529, or how would you pay okay for it? Withdraw. I'm sorry. How would you pay for college? So I'm in a fortunate position that I could actually pay. So I, I have my emergency fund that I could pay the cash, and then kind of ride it out to see how the year plays out. An emergency fund. Yeah, so I, I have savings, you know. Well, no, I mean, there's a difference in savings. savings and emergency fund. Your emergency fund is three to six months of expenses. Anything beyond that is just liquid cash. We could use that, but I'm not touching your actual emergency fund. Okay. It's not I an emergency. Liquid cash. It's not an emergency. You got some extra cash beyond your emergency fund, I think. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. You're sitting on a pile of money. How much money is in this pile? I wouldn't say it's a, a pile, but yeah. How much money? 60, How much? 60000 60, 60, Okay. How much of that is your emergency fund? Uh, 42000 Okay. So we got 18000 We can play and give the market a little bit of time to heal. Yep. So that's probably not a whole year of college. How much, um, how much is a semester, well, the- Paul? Semester's running. Oh, I'm fortunate that I have uh, grants, um, so it's around nine thousand a semester. Okay, so that'd be two semesters of tuition only. Is she living at home? No. Okay, then it's one semester of money. Eighteen thousand is going to be gone in one semester. Right. Am I missing something? With nine thousand of living expenses, you think? Well, I mean, it, you don't have enough to make it two semesters. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is, so you're gonna, you know, after you you, you get to the, you get the to delay f- touching your five twenty nine eighteen thousand dollars worth, whatever that is, right? So right. yes, I would do that, but no, I would not touch your emergency fund. No, I would not take out a student loan to time the market. Gotcha. How much is in the five twenty nine? Uh, the five twenty nine has fifty eight thousand in it. Fifty eight. And how are you paying for the rest of school? Yep. Uh, that's, that's what I'm working on. I mean, I, I'm just saving for it. Okay. What's your household income, sir? Uh, it's about 210,000 a year. Okay. You'll make it. Yeah. You're going to make it. Yeah. You'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and if you, if you got 58,000 in the 529, that means in actual cash, you did not lose much because the market's not down, but about 10%. Right. So, I mean, you lost like five grand or something. It's not like. This. I know. I'm kind of tempted. I mean, I would be curious what you'd say. Just to go ahead and use. I mean, the 529's there. Well, I would. I would. I don't mind waiting eighteen thousand dollars worth though. And let the market. You heal. would just take all that ca- all his cash that down to an emergency fund. Sure, sure. He's going to use it anyway. Eventually, but between now, plus eighteen is not enough to go to college. I know, but I'm just thinking between now and twelve months, if he needs that cash for replace a car or they're, you know what I mean? They're well, doing then you're other not going to have it for college. I mean, it. It, that money's going to college. This kid's going to school. So yeah. that money's gone. It's earmarked. Uh, you just hadn't realized it until this conversation. So, right, right, right. Uh, you don't get to buy a car if your kid's going to college. You're going to be driving that car because you're going to need that money. 18 plus yeah. 58 I know. plus cash flow and the rest of income. his income is barely going to. You can do it, but there's no squeeze room here. Yeah. So uh, you're doing a good job. Let me tell you, Paul, you are like 98% ahead of everybody. <laughs> That's right. Because most people talk about stuff and do nothing, 
and you have done something, you have saved money, you have a 529, lots of good, positive things going on there. Very, very, very well done. Very well done. I'm proud of you. So good stuff. Thanks for letting us work, work through that with you. Uh, by the way, folks, the uh, Biden administration has signed the SECURE Act 2.0, two issues in there that are pretty cool about student loans. If you have an overfunded, not Paul's problem, an overfunded 529 and you don't use it all for school, 15 years later, you're now allowed to roll it to a Roth IRA with no penalties. And so uh, if the kid could, not the parent, because it's not in the parent's name, it's in the kid's name. So if his daughter had 158000 in that 529 and there's 40000 left over after she graduates, used to be kind of stuck in there. Now they're going to allow you after 15 That's years, great. she can roll it. That's a really nice feature yeah. that the Biden administration and the Congress got through. I, I'm a, I make fun of both of them ad infinitum, uh, but I'll just but I'll, great job. I'll tip my hat to both of them. I don't know who came up with the idea, but Biden signed it. So we'll give everybody a little credit it up there that was actually good work uh to encourage that the second thing is now employers can uh put up to three thousand dollars into your 401k matching your student loan payments so if you pay down through your student loans by three thousand dollars your employer now can add a benefit to their benefits package and put up to three thousand dollars into your 401k now that three thousand dollars not going to change your life that's more every politi- yearly Every year. Annually. Once a year, yeah. But we're not going to wait around and do this, and we're not going to... Uh, Keep the student loan in order to get that three thousand. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's the problem with stuff like this. I know, All the I unintended know. consequences. But just some sidebar with what Paul's talking about there. So good job, Paul. Well done. Proud of you, my man. Andrew's in Atlanta. What's up, Andrew? Hey, Dave. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Yeah, so my, my wife and I, we recently bought a house last year. Um, we're currently on baby step six already, so we're, we're feeling really good about that. Um, good. You helped us get get here, which is is great. Um, but we've we've kind of had some as as what happens when you buy a new house. We have lots of maintenance for things that have come up. Um, unfortunately, they weren't really covered in the original like purchasing agreement, so we kind of have to pay it out of pocket. And um, we're at the point where we're having to start like dipping into our emergency fund or delaying some of the repairs. In this case, uh, a leaking roof. And I know that my, my wife's really hesitant about ever dipping into our emergency fund, so I'd love to kind I of like your wife. Get your input. On, <laughs> I'd love to get your input on like you know when when is it okay to to kind of dip into that emergency fund if it means that you know we can kind of fix the leaks. Right now we have a tarp on the roof, and um, I know she just it's her last resort. You know, yeah. uh, how much is in the emergency fund? About thirty six thousand dollars. Thirty six. How much would the roof be? Uh, the roof would be about um, ten thousand dollars, but we have about four thousand dollars set aside to cover um, that we've been able to kind of put together in the last month or so. So you would take six out of the emergency fund. That's correct, and yeah. that would be worst case. We're getting other um, your holds, household so income the, is what six, about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And so you could pay for the roof next month. Um, we could, but we also have like the mortgage payment, and that would kind of. I, I guess we we could we totally no, I mean, could. So one of the other things, that, dude, you make twenty thousand yeah, dollars a month. <laughs> one of the things that we do is we kind of have the next couple of months planned out ahead of expenses, and that's. Part I'm of, sorry, your plan like, changed. Your roof leaked. Right, and and that's kind of where I'm at, and I know that like you know we kind of have these money set aside for this purpose, and and you know we don't really want to touch it, but at some point, like you know, that's what that money's for. No, no, not if you can cash flow it. Um, okay. You know, it's an emergency if you can't cover it any other way. And so, Mm -hmm. because here's the thing. Okay, let's say you did the roof this month. Four Mm -hmm. and six out of the emergency fund. You know what you got to do in the next two months? Go out to eat a lot less. Put the emergency fund back. Right. right. So it's kind of like you got to do it next month anyway. Mm Mm-hmm. So it's just swapping dollars from the right pocket to the left pocket because it's just such a short time frame. You're either going to put the money back in the emergency fund next month or you're going to do the roof next month. Still, your little plan that you had laid out screwed because the roof leaked. (laughs) Either way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I'm sorry your roof leaked. I really am. I've been through that. It's no fun. So, I, I, you know, it doesn't matter to me. Whenever you can get the best deal and get the roofer lined up and get everything done. And make sure the leak isn't causing other damage. I mean, this yeah. may be well, more urgent. we on it. I mean, yeah. that, that makes the HOA happy because everybody <laughs> just loves the blue tarp look. 
makes everybody, the neighborhood's going up. I mean, we're, we got the blue tarps in the neighborhood now, so. Trying to stay out of the emergency fund, Trying to stay out of the emergency fund. $250,000 a year and I got a blue tarp. This is the Ramsey Show. Valentine's Day is coming. Valentine's Day. You know, Winston and I do. We celebrate on the 13th because that's when we got engaged. And oh. we skip all the hysteria of the 14th. So. Well, you can, get a, you can get a restaurant reservation, too. I know. And it's not like a set menu and all that. Yeah, yeah. You, get, yeah. you get around it. Get around it. But uh, I know a lot of people out there, you guys celebrate Valentine's Day, you know, the, the holiday of love. And it's more important than ever to focus on your relationships, the relationships in your life, specifically if you're married. So when it comes to Valentine's Day, we are all about deepening your relationships. And we have a great way to do that with Questions for Humans, which is a conversation card by Dr. John Deloney. So this is for parents and kids, this is for couples, the workplace, friends, or the dating scene. So every question will have you laughing together, learning something unexpected, and building deeper and stronger relationships. So don't just get chocolate and a card and all the stereotypical stuff. You know, get something that you actually will learn about the people in your life that you love. So make sure to check out Questions for Humans at RamseySolutions.com slash humans. Now, the first two and a half weeks of February at our house, my wife, Sharon, is Sharon Palusa. That's uh, right. Because our first date was February 6th. Her birthday's the 8th. And Valentine's Day is the 14th. So it's just like, it just keeps, the, the hits, they just keep on coming. Just keep on just coming. So we just set aside the first two weeks. It's all about her. Of February. So, as if it's not all sure. about her to start with. But um, anyway. All right, let's go to Travis in Austin, Texas. Hey, Travis, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Mr. Ramsey. How are you? Better than I deserve, sir. What's up? So over the course of the last five years, I've really kind of got my financial um house in order and i've put together what i feel is you know a, a pretty good amount of money and i i've been a long time listener i'm a first time caller and i haven't paid off my house how much and money and i have what was that how much money um my total net worth is probably about 850 grand if you, you said i put together a pretty good amount of money well, how much of that 850 is money Five hundred and fifty to six hundred thousand. Okay, and how much of that's in retirement? Two hundred and sixty thousand. Okay, so you got like three or four. You got three or four hundred thousand non non retirement laying around. You owe what on your house? Two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. Okay, she so got the cash to pay it off without touching retirement. Did I get that right? Yes, sir. Okay, so what's your question? Well. I, I'm in the middle of, uh, I'm thinking about moving away from my house and getting another house um, because of, uh, I want my kids in a different school. And so, you know, do I go pay off this house, rent it out, buy another one? Because I have the cash to do both. And, and I'm just kind of paralyzed because uh, I grew up poor. Mm -hmm. So cash is kind of king, right? You you have it in the bank and it looks really nice, but it's not really doing anything for me. Good point. And it's a scary, it's a scary thing to go from you not not house broke but all of a sudden all your money's in the house I, right? illiquid not yeah. Sitting in the bank account. yeah illiquid exactly. you can't get to it yeah exactly yes and there's some comfort from being able to lay your hands on it i don't disagree with that i understand that so here's the thing you're gonna move yes okay we're gonna pay cash for that house can we agree with that much for the house that i'm going to move into yeah you want your home you want your home paid for yeah Enough of this, okay? So your home's paid for now. Now, then the only question is the rest of the money. Do we want it tied up in a rental property, or do we want to put it in mutual funds? Yes, sir. Which one? Rental property or mutual funds? 
I would tie it up in rental property. But you can't get to it as easy as you can in a mutual fund. Yes, sir. I I think because of my job situation, I'm not as concerned about needing it immediately. Um, It's a different conversation. Who's the guy I was talking to a few minutes ago? (laughs) Well, I think you can understand this. It feels good when you... Can look I at your know. Phone, you know how much money's in your bank, right? I don't disagree and with you. That's why I'm asking you these questions. I'm just helping you walk through it. So if I'm in your shoes, right. I'm paying cash for my personal residence, and then the extra money is either going to be invested in real estate that's paid for with no mortgage, or it's going to be invested in mutual funds. This is what we teach. You know that. You've been listening to us. Yes, sir. Travis, I know okay. you said you want to move. And either one's okay. Yeah, and you want to move houses because you want a better school system for your kids. Is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Yes. So are you so with that, when you're looking at the new area that you're moving to, is all of this does that sound reasonable to sell the house you're in, take the cash you have and buy a house? Yeah. No, um so because of where I'm at, I'm outside of Austin. And the real estate market here has just been great for forever. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I owe two hundred and thirty-five on my house. My, I could probably sell my house because I've renovated it for five hundred thousand mm-hmm. and or more. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, well, if I pay off that, I can rent that out and I can apply that to a new house, mm-hmm. still afford a conventional loan, nope. and then put the money from that into the new house. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. May- Listen, if your new home was paid for and you didn't own any rental property, would you go borrow a mortgage on it to buy a rental property? No. No. Same thing. I'm taking out a mortgage right. to keep from getting rid of the one that's paid for. Right. Nope. And Travis, you're, play, you're playing the, the, the math game. And, and I hear that, right? We hear this all the time. I could do this and that and swap that and that. But, but what you're wanting, and especially what you said a few minutes ago about how I grew up and I just want cash in the bank, you want this level of security, Travis, and I'm telling you, when you have no debt, when you have no debt on your home and there is, there is no payments in the world, that freedom, that autonomy, that level of relaxing in your spirit is something that you're looking for. And I think that yes. that's going to give you a deeper level of satisfaction than trying to play this rental property game of taking a mortgage, you know, keeping this house, getting a mortgage on the new. I mean, you're, you're shuffling around, which mathematically, again, this is what the financial world, we, we hear this all the time. And, and I get it, right? You look at it on paper. But what you're missing is this underlying piece of having deep, deep peace when it comes to your money. And I think you're going to feel a level of freedom when you have no payments that you're going to make different decisions. So I think I think I messed up the numbers early in the conversation there, uh, Travis. I thought I understood you could pay for both houses in cash, and I don't think you can. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, uh, not with not with my wife, I can't. <laughs> not the house that she wants. No. Oh, um, that's what I meant. Uh, yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it, that mean, that yeah. means that means the house that you're that you're living in is going to be sold. Okay. Yes, sir. And okay. I, I took that out of the conversation. Yeah. And okay. I misunderstood, the, but the other- you don't get the option of the real estate versus mutual fund. You're selling the house that you're in. You're going to pay cash with the proceeds from that house and the cash you have in the bank for the new house. And what Rachel's saying then is going to kick in because the borrower is slave to the lender. And when you are free of masters in your life, and the only master in your life is Jesus, then you don't have the stress you don't have the and and, hey dude you make a lot of money and you've done really good Mm -hmm. you're really smart and so what will happen is without a payment in the world you're going to pile up money so fast that you're going to have great investments going again and maybe even go pay cash for a rental later but for now let's get into the personal residence that sets your family up you've worked hard for that pay cash for it by selling the other house and combining the free non-retirement cash with that to get there. And you can do that. And then let's use that increased cash flow and increased peace at home with your wife. Your kid is in the school system. What a great dad. Mm-hmm. And what a great provider. You're just, you're just manning up in a culture that's completely forgotten how to do that. So proud of you. So good, good man. And that, that's the route you go. And then without a house payment and with your income, 
you're going to have another million dollars so fast, it's going to be blinding to you. You're going to look back and go, I can't believe I was worried about that. <laughs> because that's the way it's going to go down. I really, it's the way it's going to go down. Great it's job, Travis. Way to go, Travis. But please go that route. Don't try to do too many things at once. Let's take a step at a time, step at a time. Be the tortoise, don't be the hare. This is The Ramsey Show. It's Rachel Cruz. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for being with us, America. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today, number one best-selling author, and my daughter. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825. 825-5225. Rachel, we're going to dive in with the question of the day. You want to take it? Yes. So today's question comes from Randy in Virginia. I'm having my first baby next month, and my parents want to move to my town to see the baby more often. They want to buy a house, but would have to sell theirs first to make it happen and are too lazy to go and apply for a loan. Oh, man. I thought I would just buy them a house, and then they could be my renters. I currently have fifty thousand dollars left on a two hundred. Don't laugh. Two hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage of my current home. They are in their seventies, so if they bought the home, they would pass. They would pay less taxes and claim homestead. Would it be smarter for them to buy the home themselves, or is it okay for me to buy it and make them my renters? This is just the. This is just easiest, so they can sell their house and slowly move into the new one, new house, new city, stress free. Because my dad has a ton of stuff. Oh, man. Randy. Mm. Okay. First and foremost, love the uh, love the heart <laughs> and the idea that you want to help your parents. Uh, but no, Randy, no. You buying a home uh, for them to be your renter is not a good plan. And then on top of that, you don't have the money for it. I mean, you'd be taking out a second mortgage. So... Absolutely not. Um, I think that you can invest in some plane tickets for them if they want to come see the baby a few times a year, uh, or they can come just stay at your house. But if they want to move home, their home, full time and live in a new city, that needs to be on their time. Yeah, they need, they're like grown ups and stuff. And so they need to do their own deal. Besides that, dude, you never rent to someone in the second paragraph when in the first paragraph you called them lazy. So true. <laughs> it's just a basic concept here as a landlord. Let me help you with that, okay? So if, if your first description is lazy and the next description is renter, this is on you. So, no, no. They, they need to handle this. It's sweet that they want to come be with the grandbaby. I completely get that. If I'd have known how great grandkids are going to be, I'd have been nicer to their parents. I completely get this. I understand. I agree with the move. So mom and dad put their house up for sale. When it sells, they can make the move and buy a house in your city. That's how, like, normal people do it and stuff. And that's what they need to do. So, um, And if they get to your city with a pocket full of money from the sale of their house and can't find a home right away, they can rent from someone else. Please keep the grandparents at an arm's length transaction. <laughs> Don't let the grandparents be your renters. No. no it's just so much that no. can go wrong with that. And no, the sad thing is it all 
will happen. It'll all go wrong. Hey, folks, with debt payments and now with inflation stealing more and more of your paycheck, we know a lot of you feel like you're drowning and you're scared to death and you won't have enough to take care of your family. And, oh, God, it's scary out there. I don't know what I'm going to do. Or you're at the point where you say, I'm just so sick of this. If you're ready, if you say I've had it, you are ready. We can help you. Over 10 million people have been through Financial Peace University. It's our nine-lesson course. It'll teach you how to beat debt and build wealth. It's everything you wish you'd learned about money. Because your number one wealth-building tool is your income. When you get rid of your debt, you now have control of the thing that'll make you wealthy. And if you go through Financial Peace University, we will show you how to get in control, how to be on the same page with your spouse. It's very hard. It's tough. It's a boot camp for money. If you want easy, um, you're not going to find something that works. So the, anything that's worth doing, you pay a price to do. There's a, a certain amount of pain in transformation, and that's what has to occur here. Financial Peace University, RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Check it out, RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. FPU. Rachel, we can take that family discussion even a step further, and we would do that in Financial Peace University. Um, and, and that is don't loan anyone money, particularly family or friends. Don't co-sign for people. You know, don't, you know, every time you do these transactions outside of your particular household, you set yourself up. Um, the grandmother that called here and had co-signed for her grandson's pickup truck and it's getting repoed, mm. you know, and, uh, because he had to have a pickup and his dad wouldn't sign it. So the grandmother did. Yeah. And I think that, you know, with this conversation, there's the risk of it going bad, which in a lot of cases it does, which causes even more conflict. But even, you know, I talk to people like, well, you know, my, um, uncle co-signed my car and I paid it off every month and it's great. And I paid it off and it's fine. But even within that, even if mathematically it works, relationally, it changes. It, it, it's weird. It, it changes the relationship. So from a financial level, a relational level, all the way down, it's just not wise. It just changes so much. And it's, and it's strange. It just, I mean, and we had, um, I guess it was a call. Was it a caller or someone I was talking to? And they had loaned a friend $10,000 because they needed help. And... You know, we went back in the conversation, talked about how if you have the ability just to give it without strings attached to help someone, that's if that's what you feel called to do, then you do it. But the whole idea of loaning that they're going to pay back. And then the kids showed up uh, for a big dinner that they were all having with new iPads. And the couple that loaned the money was like, they have two new iPads. They owe us $10,000. And then you start you start nitpicking yep. every train. I mean, it just you can't help it. And so, again, all the above people are not in too much trouble. Yeah, it's just like, man. If your kids have new iPads, you're not in too much trouble. <laughs> I, know. I'm, I get that, yeah. So it's just, it, it changes it changes the relationship. And then if it goes bad and it goes south, then it really can damage relationships. So keeping them separate is, it's the smartest thing. Or it's a gift, right? And you want to make sure that you're not enabling if there is a gift, that it is a well, blessing and it's helpful. Generosity is completely different than a banking transaction. Yes, yes. And when the borrower is slave to the lender and when you eat, dinner with your father-in-law, your mother-in-law, your son-in-law, and you owe them money, Thanksgiving dinner tastes different when you eat with your master rather than when you eat with your in-laws. Because it, it I, oh, well, they're nice. I don't, I, it's a spiritual principle. You cannot get away from it. The law of gravity is the law of gravity. I mean, you can have a nice master and still be a slave. Um, I mean, that's hypothetically, I mean, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the it doesn't have to be harsh. It doesn't right. have to be out of control. It doesn't have to be rage involved to change the tone. Right. To change Regardless, the air it in the room. It changes everything. So you have to be careful with this stuff, folks. You have to be careful with this. It's not to be mean to somebody. It's actually to be nice. No is, is a, no will set you free. It's a good word. It's a powerful word. This is The Ramsey Show.
Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author, Ramsey personality, and my daughter is my co-host today here on the Ramsey Show. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Mark's in Kansas City. Hey, Mark, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you both. Appreciate it. I'll get right to it. Okay. I've been, uh, I think what you call dumb, <laughs> about five years ago. <laughs> Five years ago, I uh, co-signed on a mortgage for my ex-wife, and yep, she was my ex-wife at the time. Fast forward a couple of years, I've learned that uh, she owes the IRS over a hundred grand, mm. and they've since filed a lien on her property, probably in the last year and a half to two years. So um, somehow she manages a little check to check, and the kids are going to start falling off from child support. And I don't know how she's going to make it and what implications it has for me in this whole scenario. Wow. Yeah. You're right, dude. You stepped in it. Oh, yep. man, I'm sorry. Um, okay, first I have to know what possibly, what story could possibly be told to you to make you co-sign for your ex-wife? Because by definition, oh, she's man. ex you're not going to make me tell you this. I just, <laughs> the three, yeah, the three kids and the, the violin was playing in the background, I think, and maybe Aww. caught me at a weak moment. Sweet Mark. You know, I'd heard you're a just Ramsey, trying to be a good dad. Maybe the, yeah. You thought you were doing yeah, good. You thought you were doing good for your kids. You thought you were doing good for your kids. And she's the mother of your children. Okay. We'll try to cut you some slack here. I appreciate but it. We'll still, we'll still put the action in the dumb column. I agree with your opening statement. All right. Anyway, now we're there. What do we do? Um, no sense in throwing all the everybody under the bus. Let's just keep rolling. What do, we, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Okay. She cannot refinance and get you off because she has an IRS lien. Unless you can get the IRS to subordinate, and with it being such a large lien, there's a possibility they would subordinate. She would have to qualify for the mortgage on her own, and the IRS would have to agree to subordinate, meaning they agree to stay in second position and put a new mortgage in front of them instead of the old one. Um, I've gotten them to do that in negotiations. It's rather lengthy, but she's got to qualify, and it doesn't sound like she can. Not a chance. Now, selling the house is very, very difficult. Um, however, uh, the first mortgage is how much? Four sixty. What's the house worth? I think at best eight fifty. When do the kids age out of child support? Over the next three years. How much money do you have? Uh, 1.6. Half of that's in retirement. Okay. Um, when I do something stupid and it costs me money, I call it stupid tax. Oh uh, boy, I've heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're getting ready to write a stupid tax check at some point in this equation. 
Now, sooner rather than later, later rather than sooner, depending on when the kids age out and all that kind of stuff. But let's pretend they aged out and there's no more need for you to have violins in the background uh, in terms of her having this house. I would walk over and say, I will give you $10,000 if you'll sell your house. Hmm. And then she sells the house. She has enough equity to pay off the IRS and she gets, she gets rid of the mortgage that has you on it. And then she goes and gets her another house with the equity. And she gets rid of me too. That's great. She gets rid of you. You get rid of her. This was the original <laughs> intent of the whole thing <laughs> until you stepped in it. Um, yeah. And you wouldn't push her to sell the house now because well, of the I mean, kids. she could, but I think it's going to be a harder sale. And plus you, For her to do it. you did this partly to give your kids a better place to live and they're not aged out yet. Right. That's correct. So, I mean, if you do it today, you're putting the kids in the street, too. Correct. But she could make the move today. I don't know what mindset she's in, but I'll tell you what she's probably got. she got an IRS breathing down her neck. She's got a house that she's wondering how she's going to be able to afford when child support drops off. She's worried about this stuff deep down, not on top of not on top like you are, but even she feels it in the tenseness across her shoulder blades. Because she's human. We all can see the truck coming towards our car, right? Yes. And so she sees that, and, and she does not know how to get out. Have y'all had any conversations about it, Mark, you and her? Very little. Okay. We haven't been the greatest communicators. It probably surprises you, but no, but not very much. Okay. okay. Well, no, part she, of that is, is she she's, 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 she's buried under stress, she's and it's got, it's got yeah. part of your name on it. Yeah. So... You know, I would just sit down if you can have a conversation, if it's possible, and just say, hey, here's an idea, and I'll help you one last time. If you sell the house, you get rid of me and the IRS, and you've got enough equity to go get you another house. You can either do that now, or you can do it later, and I'll write a check to help you do this, because it gets me off the mortgage. Because it's worth ten right. grand or yeah, twenty grand sure. if you got one point six to get rid of this uh, contingent liability, this cosine liability. Because if this thing goes belly up, she's going to get foreclosed on, and you're going to get to ride with her. Because you can't stop the foreclosure. Because you can't you can't force the sale of the house. The only good news in this whole story is the house has enough equity to take out the IRS. It needs to be sold for her sake. Got it. And it blesses you in the process. That's right. So let's dangle some kind of a carrot that causes that to happen now or when the kids age out. I don't care which, but the sooner the better, because I got a feeling this is. It'll be I, a relief to her I, if she, she understands whether the math. she is conscious of it or not. She's yeah. carrying a load of stress. Oh, yeah. And Dr. Oh. John Deloney talks about that when we're in debt, the, this lack of agency, this lack of autonomy because we're a slave that that she's carrying the weight of that. Well, she's, I mean, he said, and she's living paycheck to paycheck anyways. Yeah. Well, and, and then you have a you, lien on the house from the IRS. I mean, like, and the last thing you want on your li on your list of things to do is to deal with the KGB. I mean, the IRS, <laughs> it's just that they are not, this is not a creditor you want to have. Okay. No, the penalties, the interest, it's just out of control. Their power is virtually unlimited. Uh, in this case, I've yeah. seen a few times, not often that they'll actually come in and force the sale of the house to get their money, to get the money. Hmm. And if she doesn't do something with this lien, eventually they'll get around to that. Now, they're not exactly efficient, but eventually they'll get around to it. So, But the stress of this is just on everybody. Mm -hmm. So here's an interesting thing. Now, now you know, we, we poked at Mark a little bit. We also gave him a little bit of a break. And you know, we kind of laughed with him and at him both in his presence. So mm -hmm. it's all okay, right? But the Because uh, we've all done stupid stuff. But the, the thing is this. There's a couple of things here that you can take away as a money principle. Sometimes doing what it feels like is you're, you're trying to help someone, but you're doing it in such an illegitimate way, you end up actually hurting the person you're trying to help. Co-signing does that every time. There's actually a proverb in the Bible that says only a fool co-signs for another the contemporary English version says, if you co-sign for someone else, you're stupid. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Okay. So, I mean, and so co-signing is an illegitimate way to help someone. Yeah. Meaning if you don't have the money for Junior to get a car and you co-sign for Junior to get a car, you are stepping in it for sure when it's your ex-wife. 
you're stepping in it up to your knees. You need boots for this walk. Unbelievable, man. You know, for sure. And sometimes when you give someone some money, even without a debt or without a co-signing involved, uh, what and and it's enabling them to buy something they can't afford. The behavior, right, right. Then you've the you know my well my my daughter needed a house and I gave her the down payment, and, and now she's got a house payment that she can't afford. How many times does that happen? Like every week on the show, uh, a well-meaning parent. So you got to be careful what you're participating in because enablers are the nicest people in the world. They're sweet people that don't know how to say no. And then they enable bad behavior. And so while you are trying to be a help, you end up being a curse in their life. With money. (laughs) You had dollar signs on it too. curse with dollar signs. Yeah. And Mark, that's not aimed at you. That's just aimed at all the things all of us have done like what you did. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to save up to 40% off everything site-wide. Go to Blinds.com for more information. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, on the debt-free stage, Tim is with us. Hey, Tim, how are you? Hi, Dave. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Well, it's an honor to have you, sir. Where do you live? I live in Cameron Park, California, about 30 minutes east of Sacramento. Very cool. Well, welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off, sir? One hundred eighty thousand five hundred. Way to go. And how long did this take you? Seven years, three months. Very good. And your range of income during that seven years? My take-home pay was $48,000 to $68,000. Cool. What do you do for a living? I work at at a hazardous waste facility. Mm -hmm. Um, Basically, we take household paints, cleaners, paints, that kind of stuff. Um, That's kind of what I do. I do it for a local government agency down there. Yeah, cool. Okay, good. What kind of debt was your 181,000? All mortgage. You paid off Ah. your house! (laughs) Looking at weird people! A paid-for house, zero debt in the entire world. Totally free. Way to go, man. Seven years you did that. Yeah. Man. And, and in gotta, California. Yeah. Most yeah. people in California are like, this is impossible. <laughs> you did really? it. Really? What's this house worth? About three, three and a quarter. Ah, oh, way to go, man. How's that feel to not have a payment in the world? Oh, Dave, I did it in, in August, and, you know, it's so freeing. You know, you don't owe anybody anything. I mean, last month my washer broke. I'm like, oh, look, I'm going to go buy a new washer. Well, that would be fun to do. Why not? So it's <laughs> like little things you're like, I can do. There's freedom in not having mm-hmm. owe anybody money. It's just amazing. Yeah. I love the t shirt. Ramen, Ramsey approved meal every night. I know. <laughs> Good old ramen noodles, right? Yeah, I just thought I'd have a little fun with it. Yeah, well done. Well done. Okay, what started you on this journey seven years ago doing this Ramsey stuff? Well, my story my story started about fifteen years ago. I mean, I had the old um 
my about 15 years ago, I had what was known as house fever. Mm -hmm. And what happened for me is, is that I wanted a house fast, 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 fast. And so I didn't just do a 30 year loan. I did a 35 year loan with a, (laughs) with first five years being interest only. And that was dumb. Wow. Dum da dum dum dum. Wow. (laughs) But you know, and it, it was amazing because right then I switched to a new job and I didn't realize that I didn't really own the house. The house owned me mm-hmm. because I, my, my paycheck was only $2,400 a month. And between my, H, between my mortgage and my HOA was $1,700. Oof. And it was tough. What was the wake-up call? Um, you know, I took your class in 2009, mm-hmm. and I was so grateful. But, you know, back in 2008 and 2009... The mortgage is tanked, and I just couldn't refinance. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, what am I going to do about this? So I prayed about it, and I'm like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to – a lot of people in my neighborhoods were just walking away from their houses. I said, you know what? I signed up for this deal. I'm going to keep with it, but I just wish I could get it refinanced. So when finally in 2015, I looked back at refinancing, was able to refinance to a decent loan. I said, thank you. God, I was able to get out of that. Mm-hmm. And so once I did, I said, okay, it's game on now. Um, I said, I'm going to put everything I got on this darn thing. Excuse my language. but. Mm-hmm. And so basically at that time, my average between the last seven years has been about $4,000. Mm-hmm. I was putting about $2,500 of that on the mortgage. Yeah. For so about, you want it out. I, I, I want it done. Mm. I just no more. And for seven years... You just kept chipping away. Yeah, and you just... every, 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 every month. Every month. What was the hardest part for you? Oh, the hardest part, I say, for me was just the daily grind. Yeah. Of just keeping to the budget, writing it down. I mean, I had this big old huge poster board that's like that big mm-hmm. that, sh- that I looked at every time I went to sleep. And it's, I don't know if you see it on the screen, but it shows... I mean, one hundred eighty thousand mm. dollars. It's not for me. It wasn't a, it was a lot of money for me. Yeah, for real. So, but you did it. Yeah, and it was but, worth it. It yes. was worth it. Oh, it's so much more freeing now. Yeah, it's awesome. I have freedom, and yeah. it's just amazing how that feels. Great job, Tim. Thank you so much. Well yeah, done. You're going to be able to do a lot now that you don't have any payments. What's it's, your big, first big thing you're going to do with money now that you don't have any payments? Well, I paid it off last August, so mm-hmm. I went to Australia with my brother. That was fun. I got there. Some, you go, ding some, ding. That was a lot of fun. Paid for perfectly in cash and so I took care of that that was wonderful and then I did this and so it's just the freedom that you have of making choices and that's just you don't owe anybody any money it's just mm-hmm. amazing yeah. I didn't realize that until I was out how amazing that is well it, it's it's easy to think about what it'll be like but you your body really even feels different when you're completely free it's it's hard to tell people until they're there yeah. One last thing I like to mention, one thing I learned through this experience is that for me, I found that the interest you pay on a debt is the price you pay for your own impatience. Mm. There's a cost to wanting something right now. And for me, that cost a lot of my money mm-hmm. because I wasn't willing to wait. And so for those who are listening, be patient. The less money you, the less money you spend, give to the bank is more money for you mm-hmm. and that's just the simple truth it's, it, it's, it's a simple me. formula but it works yeah it really is yeah proud of you man thank you sir this who is were your awesome. biggest cheerleaders out well i had um my mom was really a very appreciative of a big cheerleader for me and you know i, I had the um facebook ramsey group that i listened to all the time to give me encouragement and that was so wonderful to that's have that a great group. group yeah it was the baby steps group yeah yeah, yeah. facebook it was just a wonderful group Always positive, always encouraging. And so that was always wonderful. Very cool. Well, good for you, brother. Congratulations. Well done, man. Thank you, Well sir. done. If somebody's listening, and maybe this is the first time they ever heard of this idea, what do you tell them the secret to getting out of debt is? The secret for me was writing it plain, writing it on paper to pen, and writing it vi- visual. Mm-hmm. I, you know, as I said, I had that big poster board that was very visual to mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And I had to make it, a heart thing, not just a mo- money thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so once I did that, it was just a matter of time, not w- w- if it's going to happen, when it's going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's interesting is, is that not only are you debt free, but you've transformed. Yeah. 
And it's, you're a different person because yeah. of the process. Yeah, it's it's been so amazing, and the people here have been so wonderful to me. It's been awesome. Good. Good. Well, we love having folks visit us here in the lobby, particularly to do a debt-free scream, baby. Mortgage House and, and all. everything. Right. Yeah. So we've got the uh, Live and Give bundle for you, the Total Money Makeover book, the Baby Steps Millionaire book, both number one bestsellers, and, of course, the uh, Financial Peace University membership. If you've done or have read any of those, those are yours to give away as well. So oh. Live and Give, enjoy them or give them or however you want to however you want to enjoy them. That's, well, they're there for you to say thank you for coming out here, and we're very, very proud of you. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this. Very, very well done. All right, Tim from Sacramento, $180. $81,000 paid off in seven years and three months, making 48 to 68 House in California is paid off. Shut up. I love it. Count it down, Tim. Let's hear a debt-free scream. One, two, three. I'm debt-free! Yeah! Woo! That's how you do it, Tim. Yeah! I'm free. That's what it sounds like when you get free. Oh. When you get the chains off, that's what it sounds like. It's pretty stinking incredible. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I love it. It's just, and, and he said it, it was like, it's it's the grind. It's the everyday choices that you oh, make. Man. Seven day years. In, and that's long. I in, mean, a culture that, that, in a culture that can't stay with something for seven minutes without picking up their phone and doom scrolling Instagram. Oh, and you stay with something seven minutes. Years. Years. Consistently. Yep. Seven years. Pushing through, pushing through, pushing through, pushing through. And that's dedication. I mean, because I do hear people talk about debt free screams. I'll see some haters online like, well, those people, they're making half a million dollars a year and all of a sudden I'm like, No, no, they're not. I mean it is like Tim forty eight to forty eight to sixty eight. And I'm like, and it's just that diligence day in and day out. And it's proof that anyone can. Tim is that example. Anyone who believes that that it is possible and that they can work a plan, they can do it. And Tim, he's that. He's that example. It's amazing. I read that tortoise in the hair book a bunch of times. Every time I read it, the tortoise wins. This is The Ramsey Show. America. This is the Ramsey Show. Common sense for your dollars and cents and for your life. Rachel Cruz, number one best-selling author of Ramsey Personalities, my co-host today. Marquita is with us in Seattle. Hey, Marquita, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for taking my call. And sure. I need some help. Um, I need assistance. I need guidance with how to set up an estate plan, an estate planning for my, on behalf of my mom diagnosed with ALS. Um, oh, here are the numbers. Thank you, Dave. Um, it's it's a lot. It's a it's a huge burden. And I'm sorry. How old? Is, how old is she? Uh, my mom is turning seventy three this month in February. Oh, mm. so sorry. Okay. Thank you. Oh man. Uh, she owns a home. Uh-huh. It's her primary home. Uh-huh. Um, the value is between the land and the house is between five hundred thousand to seven hundred fifty thousand. Uh-huh. Her income of pension and social security is about uh, thirty three thousand or thirty five hundred per month. Her mortgage she owes she has about uh, she owes one hundred thirty nine thousand uh, on her mortgage. She has thirty three thousand. She owes and thirty three five in credit card debt. She has a car that she's leasing, which has a balance of 23,000, 23, 23, mm-hmm. And her total debt is 196,599. Including her mortgage, including the credit cards, including the lease. Yes, sir. Okay. And okay. her plan um, is to keep the house and sell it 
uh, keep in the family. And I was wondering why? how would we go about... Why would you keep the house in the family? Uh, that, those are her wishes. I know, but why? Why does it matter? Is the house is she the house family was, property or is it just her house? It's family property. Yes, it's family been in the property. family generationally. Uh, no, since her since she since I, I was born into the house, so okay. since she was married. Okay. Well, her medical he, bills are expected to be about two hundred fifty thousand yeah. for ALS clinic, yeah. um, and we're wondering about what what's the best way to go about this. Yeah. Um, because she, her wishes are is that she would like to keep the house and give it to one of the kids. Yeah. I'm so sorry. So it's myself and two brothers. Yeah. Well, when you pass away, what you own stands good for what you owe. Okay. So if the family wanted to keep the house, uh, they would have a $140,000 mortgage on the house still. Um, they can pay that mortgage and keep the house. But the clinic bills, the credit card, and the car will all have to be paid. Right. So by asking you all to keep the house, she's asking you to take on the clinic bills, the car bill, and the credit card bill. Because there's no cash right. around to pay those things, correct? Well, if I was to – well, as of now, I've, been, I've moved in to assist her, um, and if I was to absorb – the mortgage payment and the pro and the annual property taxes and her income can absorb the credit card debt and and pay that off. Um, in, that's what we were thinking. In ten months, and then you've got a car that you got to deal with, and then you got two hundred fifty thousand dollars in ALS clinic bills to deal with. Am right. I, am I missing something? No, those are the numbers. Yeah, and those are the facts. Mm. Mm. So you have a harsh uh, diagnosis and a yeah. harsh reality that you're going to be walking through in the next, whatever, 12 to 36 months. Correct. And um, uh, and and I don't want to be the person that adds another harsh reality to your situation, but the house will be sold. Okay. Because you can't pay the, you can't pay the bills. And so the equity in the home will pay the bills. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Because, listen, if you don't pay the clinic, they're going to sue the estate and take a lien on the house and force the sale of the house. And you don't have $250,000, and she doesn't either. And I guess neither of your brothers do, do they? Uh, my brother purchased a home uh, last year, so as of now, no. no, yeah. no Even if one of you is sitting on a $250,000 cash balance in your personal checking account, I would not suggest yeah. you yeah. use it to keep yeah. this house. Right. I'm sorry. Can I, I mean, it, it's um, the, the house is there, and we can use it for her final days and make her comfortable. And there's nothing mm -hmm. to keep you from doing that. That that works fine. And obviously, the more of the credit card debt and the and the car you can clean up during that time with her income, and you take care of the mortgage, that's all fine. Your brothers need to be aware that you're going to be reimbursed for you paying the mortgage bill upon her death out of the proceeds or the sale of the house before they get any mm -hmm. inheritance. But basically, mm -hmm. there is enough to give you all some inheritance after everything's paid, uh, but not much, mm -hmm. right? Because her so net her, her net worth is her net worth with even add a two hundred fifty thousand dollars medical bill to it is is approaching zero. Got it. So, what sort of trust or estate planning would you recommend? Uh, just a will. Because there's no, you can't hide these things in a trust and keep this from happening. Okay, so just need a good will. Uh, you need to go see an estate planning attorney, and they can help you draft a will that uh, gives these instructions. But and I, I don't know how to break this to your mom. I don't know how to be kind to her with the, uh, you know, especially in this setting. But um, I, I, I've never 
participated in things where we didn't tell the everybody the whole truth that it turned out well. Got it. And so, I mean, you could just choose to not tell her and just draw up a will that says uh, that you guys get the house. But the answer is when it actually goes to probate court, you're going to find out you can't keep the house, no matter what the will says. Because the will does not have the power to do away with all these debts. You follow me? Yes. And, and so you still end up with the equation, what you own minus what you owe, your net worth is how it works. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys don't inherit the debt. Let's pretend that the uh, if the medical bills are a million dollars, then they're mm -hmm. just not going to get paid because there's not enough money in her estate to pay them. And you guys do not inherit debt. Uh, that's good news. But you don't mm -hmm. inherit yeah, assets right. without paying all the bills that associated with the estate. That makes sense. I'm so sorry. I know it's so hard. And I don't want to be the guy telling you all this stuff, but that gets to be my job today, I guess. Right. Well, well, we'll pray for you, darling. So a revocable, uh, a living trust would not work either. It won't cause just this to go away. Way. It just is another way to facilitate the exact same answer. Oh, okay. Yeah. That you can't hide assets in a trust from debt. You can hide them from people and keep people's hands off of them. But, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, it's a little bit strong, a little bit more way of a strong arm to ensure an estate wishes go the way you want because it's in trust and you can't, you can't, it's harder to break a trust than it is a will. But, um, mm -hmm. but neither one of them are that easy to break, actually, assuming they're drawn up properly. But, but still, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, the creditors get paid. There's not an estate planning tool, a living trust, an irrevocable trust. Uh, uh, there's not an estate planning tool that makes debt go away. Makes sense. Or the results of the debt. And the results of the debt is the person that is owed can collect their money as long as there's something to collect against. And so if the house were in the trust, the equity in the house it, it goes to the beneficial interest of an individual. Uh, however, the trust and the beneficial interest can be sued because it's part of the estate. So I'm not an attorney. You probably you do, you do need to sit down with one and you need to spend a little bit of money getting a proper will drawn up to make sure I'm not right. But I'm afraid you're going to find out I'm right. I'm sorry. Wow. Oh, my goodness. It's hard. This puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author. My daughter is my co-host today. The phone number here is 888-825-5225. Kennedy is with us in Indianapolis to start off this particular hour. Hi, Kennedy. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than we deserve. What's up? Hey, so I was calling because um, I have a son. He's four and a half, and his dad and I are no longer together, but I'm in a great marriage now, and we are actually on Baby Step 2. We're working the steps. And um, my son's dad, he's not very good with money. You know, we built a house together. I wasn't on it, obviously, but we built a house together, and he picked out everything that was super expensive. He went and he bought a brand new Jeep when he had kind of a beater. He lives to, like, impress people, and he's not a bad dad. We're on good terms, but he's just really bad with money, and I'm trying to work with my son now on chores and um, saving money and making money, and I'm, I'm worried that his dad is going to show him habits like going out to eat all the time and buying every single thing, and it's just kind of going to reverse what I do here at home. Can you help with that? 
Yeah, I mean, this is this can be a tough one. The good news is, though, Kennedy, I mean, your son's five, which is great, right? I mean, they're young and, yes, impressionable, but but you can start doing things with him um, that's not going to completely unravel just because he sees his dad. And I think parents, and I have to even realize this even with my kids, so much of what they learn is what they're watching. And so more is caught than taught. And you only have the power to control what goes on in your house. You don't have the power to control what's going to be going on in your husband's house. And so I think the older he gets, the more conversations you guys can have around money. But right now, where you're at, the fact that he's five, I think instilling these small habits. And again, Kennedy, I we have a five-year-old at home. We do this stuff. I teach it every day. And we still probably aren't as intentional as we should be with our kids, right? So like, there's a lot of grace in this. It's okay. Um, okay. They're still young. But I think, you know, slowly but surely that consistency over time of what he's going to see from you, that's what you can control. And so that's what I would focus my energy on. Um, and again, I'm sure as he gets older, there's going to be more questions. And I think you have those conversations with respect for his dad and still mm -hmm. honoring him, but also telling the truth of, hey, here's what common sense looks like when it comes to money. Here's how to, here are habits to have to set you up to win, right? Because I think it was Meg Meeker that said, we don't raise kids just to be good kids. We raise them to be good adults. Yes. And so- Yes, I love Meg Meeker. Yes, kind of having that mm -hmm. long-term mindset uh, is helpful too, but- um, Now, Meg would tell you first hard. and foremost, never trash his dad to him. Absolutely under, under not. Any circumstances. That's never, okay. ever going to happen. But then uh, sometimes the way I can find my answer on some of these things is if I take it to an extreme, it tells me how to handle it. Let's take it. Let's take a different thing instead of money. Okay. Let's just make up okay. something kind of weird or, or wild to see how we would handle that. Let's say mm -hmm. his dad drops the F-bomb every other word. He does, actually. That's oh, <laughs> who knew? And um, and we don't do that at our house. No, okay. we don't. Okay. So how do we handle that? Well, we don't trash dad no. and we can't control what dad does with his mouth over at the other place, but okay. we can only control it when you're with me. And in this house, we don't speak that way. Okay. We have more class than that. We're mm -hmm. not trash. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, we have, we have a sense of decorum. We have a sense of nobility in our home and we don't, we don't okay. speak using those types of words. Uh, they're called vulgar. We don't teach a four year old mm -hmm. that, but I mean, this is what's going through your mind. Right. And so you mm -hmm. go, well, mm -hmm. I can't control that, but all I can control is what we do here. And, and so your interaction with him is we don't do that when you're here. Okay. okay. And, uh, okay. You, you don't, we don't do that here. And so we don't, when we're here, we work. And we do our chores. When we're here, we're generous with our money. When we're here, we save our money. When we're here, okay. we make wise purchase decisions with our money as coached by our mom. I, mm -hmm. And then that's all you can do. Now, what will happen at the end of the story is this, okay? Common sense and love and proper truth does win out in these things, but it takes time. So when he's 26... And he did something stupid with money. He's going to know what stupid looks like because it was described to him by you. And so he's going to go, gosh, I really can't model my life after my dad. My mom's plot process works. I need to gravitate back to that. And I'm going to probably go to my mom. Yeah. And if I need, if I need help, if I need yeah. financial advice, I don't go to my dad who's broke. I'm going to go to my mom who mm -hmm. taught me this stuff the whole time growing up. And, but that he'll go through the phase like all kids do where first you're, you, you know, somewhere around 14 years old, my mama is stupid gland kicks in. Right. And then it takes until about 30 or 25 oh. <laughs> or whatever for it to grow back. Right. Before. And then suddenly at some point in their twenties or whatever, you're a genius again. And you're going to go through that regardless of whether you're together or whether you're apart. So, uh, uh, you know, that's going to happen here. It's not going to be a perfect path. And there's not anything you can do to protect him from uh, bad money habits or vulgar mouths when they exist with your ex. Because the truth is, too, Kennedy, you know, you could you could have been in a marriage raising him and doing everything possible to teach him to be wise with money. And then at the end of the day, when they go off on their own, suddenly they're adults that have to make their own decisions, too. And you know, right. we're, we're yeah. getting even that second generation of Ramseyites, so like that, that kids that grew up listening to Dave so on the show. Make very sure you talk about what you and your current husband are doing 
to the four-year-old in age-appropriate ways so they see the model. And okay. you coach him on his personal behavior so he sees the model. And then it'll work out. It's going to be okay. But it, there's no ironclad protection when you've got, you know, when he's going to get exposed to the virus on the other side. So, okay. it's just, okay. you know, it's, it's just like the mouth thing. It's the same thing. And so you, you're get you just got a bad model over there. And that, that's, that's, you know, and, but you can't fix your ex-husband. That's why he's your ex. So, and you can't control him. That's why you're, he's your ex. But even with parents too, what I was saying earlier was, you know, even if you do, and about any, any area of parenting, right? You, oh, there's you, no guarantee. Yeah. Right. So all like, you can do is give it your best shot. That's right. So that's what I would say too, Kennedy is like, give yourself some grace. Yeah. Do what you can in your household. And then at the end of the day, launching them into the world, it's like, okay. If you model it more is caught than taught and you teach it, you've done all you can do. That's yep. your best shot. And it works out more times than not. So that's why yep. we do yep. it. That's exactly. why we do it. Exactly. Hang on. We're going to send you a copy of Smart Money, Smart Kids that Rachel and I did together, teaching your children how to be smart with money so that when they grow up, they have a brain. We'll and what's with hard that. in those situations is like the Disney dad thing, too. When they yeah. go to dad's, oh, yeah, when they go to mom or dad's doing. house, that's the spender. And it's like, oh, we're going to have all this fun. Yeah. And to a kid, it's like, oh, this is way more fun. And that's a hard pill to swallow, too, when you're the parent. Like, oh, I'm, like, the I'm the only the grown up in one. this equation. I know. Yeah. yeah, it's hard. You're doing great, Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're going. It's going to work out. Hang on, Austin's going to pick up. We'll send you a copy of Smart Money, Smart Kids. It was the first number one bestseller Rachel had, and the first one I ever, and the only book I've ever done with her that was a number one because it's the only book we ever did together so far. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. America. Hey, tickets are going fast for our Building Wealth Live Tour. We have four more stops on the live events. Three to 8,000 of you are going to be at each of one of these. Thank you. You don't want to miss these. They're going to be a blast. If you're doing this stuff, it's kind of like a big pep rally to come around all the Ramsey people doing this stuff. It's a lot of fun. And we're going to talk about how to build wealth in the middle of all this craziness going on in 2023. February 16th, just a couple of weeks, Rachel Cruz, George Campbell, Jade Washaw, and I will be in Indianapolis. Few tickets left to Indy. It's not quite sold out. I'm a little surprised by February 16th. It'll be there, though. We're just around the corner. Uh, the next week will be in Austin, Texas. Again, a few tickets left. Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney, Jade Warshaw, and me. And April 24th, uh, Rachel Cruz and I and George Campbell and Christina Ellis will be in Salt Lake City. I'll be along with uh, Ken Coleman, Dr. John Deloney, and Christina Ellis on the final stop of the tour in Anaheim on May 2nd. Tickets are $49. You can get a four-pack and bring your friends for only only 175 you pay more than 175 to go to a concert of almost any kind and this will actually give you the information to change your life now concerts are fun this will be fun but you also will come away motivated and going oh man all this junk i'm hearing on the news i think i can still win anyway ramseysolutions.com slash events get your tickets right now the building wealth live tour indianapolis austin salt lake city anaheim looking forward to seeing you guys Come on out now. The phone again, RamseySolutions.com slash events. All right, let's go to Julie in St. Paul, Minnesota. Hi, Julie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I've had recently, my husband and I have had some changes um, with work. And what I'm trying to figure out is how to make um, monthly contributions that we both make to a joint household account equitable and fair. Um, He's recently accepted a new job, making considerably more money, um, and I'm straight commission, so my money is always variable. 
it, it'd be different if, you know, we had, he made a hundred thousand, I made 50, then it's pretty easy how to figure out. But how do you figure something out when somebody's variable commission every month? <laughs> how long have you guys been married? We've been married about three years. We've been together about eight and sharing finances for about six. Okay. Well, my answer is really simple, Julie. It's all of yours together. So once it hits a bank account that you guys share, regardless of who brings in the money, it is your money. You guys together as a couple, it is your both of your money. Both of your monies, all of your monies together. So, uh, you're you're acting I, you're st- you're acting like you're still roommates. You're not roommates. <laughs> you're, you're husband and wife. And so okay. there's a there's a the power. Preacher, the preacher Julie. said, and now you are one. He did not pronounce you a joint venture. There is okay. there so, is power and power in combining finances, combining checking accounts, working out of the same pot, regardless of who brings in the money. That together you're a team and and even studies recently there's been like two or three recently coming out talking about even the satisfaction the marriage satisfaction and joy is higher with couples that see themselves as one when it comes to money and it is it's probably one of the more countercultural things I feel like we talk a lot about countercultural stuff on the show but mm-hmm. for so many people they do what you guys do they're running these kind of these two separate lanes trying to figure out okay who pays what bill what's fair what's equal when you just scrap all of that and say, hey, this is our house. When our incomes come in, it is our income. What are we going to do with our money? And you see yourself as a team, as one, as unified. Mm-hmm. And and my thing is, I'm like, if you can share a bed, you can share a bank account. You guys are married. You are one. <laughs> you are together. Now, in your budget, you have a line item that's a Julie line item, and you have money to go and spend and enjoy. And that's great. You know, I have a Rachel line item. And I can go buy us sweaters and new pair of jeans and I'm not having to like text him every time, right? We have a certain amount of money that I get to spend every month, a certain amount of money he spends. So there's still a level of, yeah, you still, you have money to spend, but that's agreed upon that amount together. And so something changes, Julie, I'm telling you. You both have power. Not just tactically, things change when you combine accounts, but emotionally, the unity that's created, you start to see yourselves as one and you win faster financially when you do that. You work together, you communicate. There's so, there's so many pros, I'm telling you, so many pros that come there's out so of- so much data to back this up, by the way. Of working but together. It, it's, it, and, it sounds devastatingly old fashioned though, doesn't it? A, a little bit, yeah, when you've been very independent yeah. for the majority of your life. Yeah. And, yes, exactly. yes, um, it's different. Wanting to contribute equally too, yeah. you know, but that always sometimes not but getting it kinda, it, the problem is when you're doing it your way it, it almost feels like if you're not putting in more you, your vote doesn't count as much mm-hmm. and it does you have equal votes in the marriage you have equal votes on whether okay. we buy a house equal votes on whatever if you don't believe me visit divorce court they'll give both of you an equal vote <laughs> right the law okay. says that exactly. even the law says that so here's an interesting extreme okay my wife sharon okay. uh, left the workplace mm-hmm. Uh, of her own choice uh, when my oldest daughter Rachel's older sister was born and Denise is what 30 something years old right Mm -hmm. so for 30 something years Sharon has not had an income and yet Sharon has a great income because we have a great income we own a house now we do at our house still say that's your car because it's the one she drives more than me and it's the one with mm-hmm. a dent from hitting the garage door but oh, i said that out loud but yeah that's your car this is my car but they're our cars it's our vacation it's our retirement it's our money and we are going to design a life we want to live together we both have a vote she has the same vote i have and she brings nothing of income to the equation now, I didn't say she brought nothing to the equation. I, I said she say. brought nothing of income <laughs> to the equation. Let's be very, very clear about that after the garage door joke. But um, <laughs> I'm already in deep kimchi here. But the uh, but that that's the uh, uh, that's the thing. So yeah, I I think um, I, I think that uh, uh, I think you can try this as an experiment because there's nothing mm-hmm. that says you can't undo our suggestion. Try it for six months, Julie. Between now and summer. Combine and, accounts and, and okay. change and change your ch- change your language when you do our not yours and mine 
hour, 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 and see if you don't notice some subtle shifts with that communication in your relationship. It's it's proven, and it's just we've been doing this a long time. And we, Rachel's right, we get mm-hmm. trashed on social media for this because it's like it's so it's it's like old fashioned. See the old marriage vows, you know, uh, for richer for poorer. We've all heard that in sickness and in health. We've all heard that the old Book of Common prayer marriage vows say, "Unto thee all my worldly goods I pledge." That's you don't hear that in a marriage anymore either. No. But in you know, fifty years ago, almost every wedding you went to, you would have heard that. Okay. And or sixty years ago, um, I've been married forty, and it wasn't in mine. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's it's old school is what yeah, I'm saying. It's yeah. kind of it's got a very uh, uh, almost a Victorian feel to it now. And what can come with that is the sense that you've lost power, and we're not suggesting that your vote is diminished. No. I'll guarantee. Dad, blame to you, to you, my uh, hillbilly wife has a vote, okay? She takes you her vote. You can call if, you a hillbilly. Can it, you call her a hillbilly? Sure. She's hillbilly, too. We're both are. <laughs> noble, noble hillbillies. But, uh, but I mean, the, the chances of me taking away I your know. mother's vote is zero, right? Oh, my God. Even yes, if I yes, wanted no. to be overbearing, it's not an option. Stop. Okay, yeah. That, no, 100%, 100%. And I will say this. One of the pushbacks I get on social media is, well, we just kept fighting all the time. And now we have separate accounts and we don't fight anymore. Well, it's because you're just denial. That's okay. So that's my point is I'm like, that's the exact fight you need to be having to have a deep, rich marriage. Like you can't just sweep things under the rug and function like two different, you know, two different places and then yeah. call that okay. That's not okay. You and broke so up and didn't admit it. It it, cha- it forces you to communicate and, and work together as a team. And I'm telling you, Julie, it's worth it. It changes it other things shot. in your marriage. It Give changes it a shot. Other things in your that's, marriage. that's our pitch. Give it a shot. This is the Ramsey Show. Rachel Cruz, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Um, some of you are new to this. Uh, we've got literally millions of you joining us in the last couple of months. Thank you. We're so glad you're here, and we want the opportunity to love you, an opportunity to help you. Um and, and sometimes you get in here and you, you hear information that's new to you. It's a new way of thinking. And uh, for some folks in our culture today, that, that's not a challenge because they're looking for new information. They're looking for a new way of looking at things. Other times it's a challenge for you because you get all disturbed and you think it becomes your job then to uh, get us to change. Um, you got confused about how this relationship works. Okay. Because this is called the Ramsey Show. This is what the this this is who we are and what we teach. If you want to do a show, go do a show. Okay. But, Did you get some hate at the break? Uh, no, I just I always get hate. I've gotten <laughs> hate for thirty years. You're going to get a hate after that last call. Like you you always get hate when you bring this whole thing up. You get trashed on this stuff. <laughs> and uh, but that the the whole point is, let me help you with this. I, for thirty years, every letter that has come to Ramsey to me, has been answered, except junk mail and hate mail. There's no reason to answer hate mail, and there's no reason to answer idiots in the comments section of YouTube, okay? There's no reason, because let me just tell did you think we were going to change because of you, little troll? You got confused how this works. We're not going to change, because we're right, so you, that's why you came here in the first place, because you wanted new information, because the information you were using sucked, and so did your life. And so we're here to help you with that. It's what we do. 
And and so, but don't get confused about this stuff. It's uh, it's just hilarious to me that I was just reading. But a there book. are well, things you learn in life. I, Dave. I, I learned I learned on the air something yesterday. Okay, and, I would and, love to hear. And, it. and so I, I don't <laughs> mind learning, but uh, the, but I didn't learn it from a troll. Sure. Okay, and yeah. I didn't, and, and so, and I didn't learn it from an activist. Oh, give me a break. Get a job. Um, so, so just, I, you know, I was just thinking about how much crap you're going to catch. Oh, and it's I, fine. And I'm fine. You, you actually I'm see fine. it, but I don't even see it because I don't even look. If you read comments after an article, you understand why some species kill their young. I mean, it's just un, the, the ignorance that abounds out there is unbelievable. So uh, the interesting thing about this, uh, the, you know, the last 25 or 30 years, we've all grown up. Uh, some of you have grown up with and I've adapted as an old fart to uh, walking around with this magic wand in my hand. And so I can push a button and stuff shows up on my front porch. I'm magic. And so I must matter. I've got great power. No, you really don't. Do you think that's where it comes from? Yeah, oh, I guarantee you. It, it, we gave people agency beyond their ability to control it. We to, gave them autonomy beyond their yes. ability to control it, and thus they become trolls because someone they thought they got confused and thought someone cared what they thought. Hey, listen, you live in your mother's basement. I don't care what you think. It's not. I'm sorry. You haven't but even earned. If they the, don't. You haven't earned the right to speak into this yet. Okay, so that's that just to go ahead and help you guys that are new how this stuff works. Well, you're arrogant. No, I'm just confident. There's a difference. Arrogance is unfounded. Okay, we've been doing this 30 freaking yes, years. Yes, and the prince. Yes, and yes. it works. And the principles work. And they're they're biblically based, common sense. When things used to not be so nutty out there. And this agency and autonomy we've given to people who have to have an opinion and to speak in and to raise hell with people uh, when they haven't earned the right to do it uh, is not good for our culture. It's damaging our culture because then people are actually being swayed by crazy people, the mob. And so it's hard to cancel us. We own this and we're not going to stop. So if you don't like it, your only option is leave because we don't even care if you bitch. It doesn't bother us. So just kind of helping you guys set out how, how this works. So I think I just got to every so often we have to reset, the, re reset the equation here. Man, you dropped the B word, Dave. <laughs> so, well, I mean, it's, it's okay. Life's good. Life's good. It is. And listen, it's fine. See, I, it's so fun. I'm like, just, it's just different personalities. If, ever, if there are people that totally disagree and they think we're nuts i'm like that's great i don't that's fine you can think we're nuts uh just go somewhere else i mean it didn't it didn't why are me. you wasting your breath that's my point yeah, <laughs> move along little doggy yeah so there we go we can handle the loss in ratings i promise you <laughs> open phones at 888-825-5225 jason's with us in kansas city hi jason how are you you doing great yourself Better than I deserve, man. What's up? Have you ever trolled someone, Jason, on the internet? Dave needs to know <laughs> no. right now, Jason. I have never trolled anybody. I have I'm not. I'm just kidding. I'm Other just kidding. than, I, I mean, I get, trolling is when you don't own it. But I, I've, I've given smart aleck answers back when Twitter used to work, back before it deteriorated into a cesspool. But, um, oh but anyway, sorry, sorry Jason. Jason. We brought you in. Jason, you got, We're you walked right into the band. So how can we help, man? I did, apparently. So. <laughs> Uh, it may be an easy answer for you. So I was wanting to refinance my home uh, for um, for again some equity to pay off some bills and expenses that I have, and maybe also do a little bit of re renovating in my home. And not sure as far as if it would be the best case scenario to do that, uh, or to eliminate some bills, and that would eliminate most of what I have, and then I just have a little bit of a higher mortgage payments yeah um the problem with that process is is that we've not seen it to work because you didn't really eliminate the bills you just moved them yeah i okay. kind of visualize that and when it comes to renovating your home you just borrowed money to go yeah. renovate your home and so we want to teach we want to lead you if we can out of debt not into debt 
and out of debt so that you can have money to invest so that you can be wealthy and outrageously generous and have an awesome life. That's where we want to lead you. So we're it, it, based on that, we're going to work the debt snowball on the bills and then save up and pay cash for the renovations. How, how expensive renovation do you want to do? I really, I just want to um, do the kitchen, which I'm going to do personally myself. So I'm not paying someone to do it. It's not going to be a lot of money. How then. much debt do you have, Jason? Um, I, in total, maybe about 15000 Okay. How much do you make a year? Uh, a little over fifty. Okay. Yeah, so I would just pay off that fifteen, and then get a good emergency fund. Do you have any savings? I do. I have it's, it's about three thousand. About three. Right okay. Now. Yeah. So I would take that. I would take two of that. Throw it at the fifteen. Keep working that. Get a great emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, and then at that point, if you want to start some retirement saving on the side for the for the remodel of the house, I think that's great because. Here, here's a big problem, Jason, that we find, and this is if people do something like this, or even if they get a big inheritance or like a big end of the year bonus, and they have a, a pile of money that they're going to throw and pay off debt. What we have found is personal finance is 80% behavior. It's only 20% head knowledge. So it's almost like you're putting a Band-Aid on your past money habits just to clear it. And again, just like Dave said, you're reshuffling it. You're still, you still have that debt. Uh, it just goes into it goes into the house instead, and there's something about you, Jason, that that is transformed when you work the process and you pay this debt off, you save the cash, and you do it. And in that process, that's when your habits start to change in your outlook versus just moving debt out of the house, throwing it, fixing that problem over here, the fifteen thousand you know, doing it all. So working the actual plan is where you're going to see long-term results, not just with your money, but with you. Hey man, we'll help you. We want you to go through Financial Peace University as our guest. I'll pay for it. Okay. Hang on. We'll have Austin pick up and we'll get you in the class. You and your wife go through that class and it'll, this will make more sense to you because if you just snap your fingers and the debt goes away and you don't change your habits, the debt grows back. That's Rachel's point. And that's what we don't want to see you have happen here. So hang on. We'll walk with you and show you how to do this. Scripture of the day, 1 Corinthians 3, 12, and 13. If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become obvious, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test the quality of each one's work. Alex Honnold said, no matter the risks we take, we always consider the end to be too soon. Even though in life, more than anything else, the quality should be more important than the quantity. Mm -hmm. JT is with us in Tupelo, Mississippi. Hi, JT. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Mr. Dave. How are you and uh, Miss Rachel? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Um, yes. Yeah, so my wife and I, we are actually in the process of a new chapter in our lives. Uh, several years ago, we went in and throughout Mexico and Brazil doing mission work and spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ into the streets. And uh, we fell in love with helping people. It was something that um, absolutely changed and shaped our lives in the biggest way possible. And uh, God really put it on our hearts to do this permanently. So upon arriving back to the United States, we set out and um, pretty much turned a school bus into a home. And um, so we're going to be taking this bus in and throughout Latin and South America. And um, our goal, or really our mindset, is to be doing this very long term, possibly 10 years, even 20. I don't really know. Um, but previously, the way we did it was we would just raise money, quit our jobs, leave, uh, 
do all these things in the streets and then come back, find new jobs, and then repeat the process. But doing it this way, uh, we're not really going to be able to do that. We want to permanently be there. And so my question is, in regards to this, we're we're looking at somewhere around $40,000 more or less a year. Uh, and that's not a lot, a lot, but um, I think it's more than enough that we will need to do it. And um, we're trying to figure out which direction to take for the amount of, for the, the support that's coming in as far as like churches and individuals and businesses that are giving to us to support this mission. Um, how do I do that? Like, is this something I need to do through nonprofit? Because it's just my wife and I and uh, my one child. Uh, so it's not like a big corporation or a big, you know, nothing big really. Uh, but I don't really know how to do it as far as the taxes and stuff goes. And at the same time, I want the people that are supporting us uh, to have as much benefit as possible as well, you know, in regards to tax write offs and stuff like that. All right. I well, love your heart, brother. Very cool. You're Thank good. You. You're a good man. And so it, it, it is a fairly simple process, but it's going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of expense. You set up a 501c3 nonprofit, and uh, that nonprofit then becomes tax deductible for anyone that donates to it. Uh, you'll have to find, you'll, you'll establish an IRS number, and that'll be associated, given to each of your donors uh, that they then can take, that take the tax write off. A nonprofit does not mean um, that uh, uh, no money's coming in. It doesn't mean that not enough money is coming in. It is a simple accounting entry that shows that the owner of the business is not taking the money home for ex- as excess profit. It's all it is. Okay, so my point being this: a nonprofit has to techni- has to physically be profitable or you go home okay meaning you have to bring right. in more than you take out like if you need 40,000 and you bring in 30,000 you're a nonprofit but you're going out of business right right so nonprofits have to be from a cash standpoint actually profitable so you have to bring in more than goes out but it's an accounting entry with the IRS that shows that the profits are being used for the benefit of the ministry, which includes feeding you and your wife. And it's not $400,000 a year of income for the two of you, uh, although that's technically okay. Uh, it would be suspicious to your donors, uh, but but it's 40000 okay. and, uh, and And, you know, just as a practical uh, thing, Ramsey – Family Foundation, we've got friends that do some of the things that you do, and they are some of the people that we donate to from time to time. And as a donor, from the donor's side, uh, we love seeing that the money's helping people. And so just some simple uh, iPhone videos sent back occasionally and a little bit of a report on the finances showing that, um, uh, you know, you're you're living on $40,000 a year, which even in Latin America is certainly not a living high on the hog right so uh you know right. we see where the money's going we see that the people are being helped the results of our donation because we see our donations as investments into those people on the street that you're trying to help and you're the vehicle by which they get there that's how a donor thinks okay and if you can keep um, that so donor like keep that donor relationship real clear and have the irs and it's a separate bank account separate from your personal checking, and then you are allowed by the charter of the nonprofit to live out of that, to pay personal expenses out of that, because it's, this is a ministry. It's a mission. You're, you're missionaries. Okay. And that'll be so st- in regards to, like, spending money, um, let's say, because uh, we're, we're trying to be really realistic as well with, um, I guess, allowing time for ourselves to, uh, so, for example, let's say we went to a local carnival uh, a couple of days out of the month or something to uh, just have like a family day for us to keep it. To yeah, keep you're things, you're, you're not required. You're allowed to live a reasonable life out of this. It's not it's not a violation of law or it won't lose your tax status or something like that. Where people get into trouble is more of a PR thing than a legal thing. When some uh, oh, okay. when some nonprofit starts bu- buying a private jet, that's when people go, huh? <laughs> you know that kind of stuff. And you're not, going to the carnival oh. is hardly on that thing. Is but that's more of a PR than a legal. It's not technically illegal 
to buy a private jet with a nonprofit. It's nothing wrong with it, uh, but but it blows the donor base up and it blows the PR up, right? So, um, right. and we've all read those stories, you know. So, uh, in a nonprofit setting, because people like me, but, we we don't want to donate to your private jet. We want to donate to those people on the street right. that you're helping. And if you take your Absolutely. family to the carnival in the process, we're not going to be angry about that. Okay, I see. So, in regards to us doing those types of activities. That's completely normal and you would move and legal. You, you, say, yeah. money. you would move money from the nonprofit into your personal account as your personal income. Missionaries all okay. do that because missionaries all have to eat and have electricity and gas in the bus. Right. The nonprofit. Okay. And then at the end of the year, what do I do as far as taxes go in regards to keeping up with how much I move from that account into ours? Nothing or nothing. Your missionaries. Oh, okay. you're, you're living on donations. Oh, okay. I understand. Yeah. Double, okay. double, double check with your tax person, and they can help you walk through all of this. Matter of fact, if you hit the tax pros on RamseySolutions.com, one of those in your area will probably be able to guide you through forming the nonprofit. It's really not that difficult. Yeah, it just takes a little not, bit of time. It's not considered income if he takes that. Shouldn't be. I'm sure, I mean, because he's living on through. donations. So, yeah. But, uh, you know, again, double check that because yeah. I'm wrong half the time on this stuff. So, uh, tax stuff I'm horrible at, but I do know the part about the nonprofit because we formed the Ramsey Family Foundation. We've got our own that we use for as a as a methodology for our family's generosity uh, and philanthropy. And so, um, but and so we have a five hundred one c three that does not take donations from the outside world. We fund it ourselves. And so, uh, and then that's how, that's how we handle the distribution of our giving is through yeah. that. And your sister Denise is the director of that. Uh, again, so we kind of got into all of that uh, in detail, even though we're not on the mission field. Now we don't, I don't draw an income from that foundation. Uh, I'm furnished the income to the foundation. So quite the opposite. So, but that, that's what you got to get into and just learn about it. But it's really not really that tough. There's not it's not complete rocket science where you can't get your arms around it. You'll be able to figure it out and do it. Hey, man, we love you. Appreciate what you're doing. That puts this hour of The Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. It's Rachel Cruz. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter.